Hello and welcome to this video for Excel, Chapter 4, Hands-On Exercise Number 4. We are on page 60, uh, 646, so 646 of your textbook. Um, we're dealing with table aggregation and conditional formatting, so um, more things here with tables. So we're going to start with step A. It says to open up the file you're looking at right now, Excel Chapter 4, Hands-On 3, Read. And we're going to save it here, switching it to Hands-On Exercise number 4. So File, Save As, Browse. And it should be in the correct folder already. So I'm just clicking here and changing it to this. And then I'm going to save it. And we're good to go. Step B, it says select the March individual worksheet. So we're finally switching over to this worksheet that we haven't messed with the whole time. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more for you to see it better on my screen since you probably have it smaller and split. It says click anywhere inside the table. So I clicked in there. We're going to click the design tab under table tools at the top, design tab. And then click the total row in the table styles option group so right under that tab for me so total row we're clicking on in the table styles option group you can see it went down there and it showed a total row for us which is nice so you don't have to actually type in total and put it in um, it went and did it for us with ode over here step C it says click the down pay cell in row 110 so down pay cell it looks like that is J110. It says to click the totals arrow. So right here next to it, that's the totals arrow. And then we've got some different options here for it. And we're going to choose sum. So it's adding up the numbers. I do need to widen my column a little bit so you can see. And I got $190,602 is how much in down payments. Then step D, it says click the amount cell in row 110. So I'm just going over one more column here. So I 10, 110. And I'm clicking the total arrow again. And then um, I'm going to select sum again. And very easy way to do the totals here. So Microsoft Office is all about simplifying, making it easy for you to do things as a consumer. Step E, we're on the next page, 647. Click the sales list filter arrow. So sales last, excuse me, filter arrow up here. We're going to click the sec select all box to uncheck them. And then we're going to click the Grenuald box to select it and click OK. And of course, it's organized our information differently. Um, here it's limited how many rows are visible. I am going to change the column width so you can see it. Sometimes when you zoom in and out, it's just that. Step F, it says click the Data tab. So I'm going up here to the top, clicking Data tab. And then I'm going to click Clear in the Sort and Filter group to remove all filters. You can see it went right back to it. So we were just wanting to practice. Of course, some of the things we did are still there. Step two, we need to apply and highlight cell rules. Step A, it says select row headings for six through 109. So I'm going to go up here towards the top. Towards the top. Row six right here. I click and hold down through 109. So I got to go down a ways. A little bit more. So row 6 through 109 in the March individual worksheet. So we're still there. Then it says click the Home tab. And then we're going to click the Fill Color Arrow over here. Fill Color Arrow with the paint bucket. And we're going to select No Fill down here. So there's no fill for the color fill. Then it says range B6, or excuse me, select range C6. So right here, Sebastian is it in that cell through C109. My computer's going a little bit slow here with it. Okay, it looks like I gotta go down two more. Oh, 109 right there. So C6 through C109. 
And then it says click conditional formatting in the styles group. And you can see up here, here's our styles group. We got conditional formatting right here. This is the button for it. And it says we're going to select highlight cell rules. Or excuse me, point to it. And then select text that contains. So we go down the list here until we see text that contains. I click on that. And it opens up a dialog box. And this is step D. It says we want to type sub uh, excuse me, Sebastian in the box. It already selected for us. Um, so we already have that there. And then it says click the with arrow. So right here you can see light red fill with blah, blah, blah. We're going to click that. And we're going to actually select green fill with dark green text. And then I click OK. So you can see now it's highlighting it to me. It's showing me um, that specific information, making it stand out. It says to deselect the range. So I just click. I'm going to save the workbook. And of course, move on to step number three on page 648. And we've only got five steps here in the exercise, it looks like. So we're going through this pretty quickly. Step A, it says select range I6 through I109. So I'm going up here to I6 through I109. I got to click and drag, go down. It's going a little bit faster this time. There we go. Make sure you select the right cells. Step B, click conditional formatting. Again, in the styles group. And choose, or excuse me, point to top and bottom rules. Top slash bottom rules. And select top 10 items. Top 10 items. And then step C, it says click the arrow to display three. So I'm going to click the down arrow here until it shows three. And then it says to click OK. So it changed how many. Then step D, we are going to scroll through the worksheet to see the top three amounts. So we already have two right here. Um, and then I have the third one right here. Um, it looks like a row 78. So that's how it should be displaying. Uh, then step four on the next page, we're going to display data bars, which is a great way for us to visually see it in a small area. Step eight says select J6 through J109. So J6 through J109. Oh, uh, I'm already there. And then step B, click conditional formatting again. We're going to point to data bars and then select the purple data bar right here. Purple data bar in the gradient fill group or section. Excuse me. And of course, it says scroll through the list and save your workbook. And you can see um, it's changed all of them. It's a great way to compare the numbers for us to see it. I'm going to click outside of that group and save it. And moving on here to our last big step. We're going to use a formula in conditioning formatting. Step A, select range F6 through F109. We're going to do that. Then step B, we're going to go up here and click conditional formatting in the styles group. And we're going to select new rule. So we're creating a new rule here with this. Step C, it says use a formula, or excuse me, select use a formula to determine which cells to format. I'm going to click on that once. It's going to select it for me. And then it says format values where this formula is true. And it says edit the rule description. And we're going to type in down here equals and all caps C6 equals quotation marks Sebastian quotation marks comma K6 greater than 5000 so we're putting a use a formula to determine which cells to format so it says equals and C6 equals Sebastian K6 um, greater than 5000 so because you're comparing the contents of cell C6 to the text um, that's why we do it we're putting in marks 
and then after this it says click format to open the format cells dialog box so it's right here above cancel we're gonna click um, step F here it says click the font tab it's already selected we're gonna choose bold right here in the font style list we're gonna click the border tab so going up here border tab it says click the color arrow for the border so where it says automatic we're clicking that arrow we're choosing blue accent 5 which I believe is over here I'm gonna click on that then it says to click outline so presets outline and it shows up here in my box then it says click the fill tab so we're going to another tab here fill we're going to click blue accent 5 background color so here's background color we're going to go over here to blue accent 5 click on that and then it says to click OK down here in the bottom right corner it says click OK again in the new formatting rule dialog box and then we can scroll through and you can see um, that it marked those specific ones with the information that we needed so it has Sebastian and it's also over five thousand dollars that's why some of them um, with Sebastian if it's not over five thousand dollars like this one it doesn't show up then step H it says save and close the file so I'm going to save it and of course I'm not going to close it yet um, but then you need to submit it um, of course based on your instructor's direction so what I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly scroll through um, this so you can see it starting here at the top um, but remember you have all the different filters and sorting that we've done so I'm going to be looking to see does it match my file if yours is completely off and doesn't match you're going to need to go back and look and see so um, it's always good to double check as you're going through the exercises they're not too long on purpose because we I want you to be able to do that in the moment make sure you get it right and when you double check as you go you actually save yourself more time so and that is how you complete Excel chapter 4 hands-on exercise number 4